Welcome again. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to give a special thanks to all of these people. They helped me bring all of this together, so I was just super grateful for their help. Um, and a little bit about me. So I am a coding camp student I, or graduate. Uh, shortly after that, I did a front-end development internship, and then I started at SalesLoft as a support engineer. OK, so a question for everybody in the room. Um, have you ever volunteered to take on a project that you did not know how to do? A coding project that you did not know? Yeah. So do you remember how that made you feel? Were you nervous? Were you like excited or overwhelmed? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can relate. I, uh, that's some of the feelings I had while I rebuilt refactor.tech using Gatsby.js. And so I'm here today to talk about that experience with you. OK, here is a quick overview. I'm going to talk about what a static site is, what Gatsby.js is, how I got started. Um, I'm going to share what it was like using GraphQL, how we created pages from data that we pulled down from graph with GraphQL, um, and then multiple ways we made uh, refactor.tech better. Okay. All right, so let's go. <laughs> okay, so what is a static site? I'm sure everybody knows this. Here's a very high level illustration of what that is. If you're a bootcamp student, then maybe your first project was something like a static site. Um, the main takeaway here is that there's no database, there's no server side code like Ruby or Python. And so, because of that, uh, static sites usually have these benefits. They're easier to deploy. They are usually cheaper to host. And static files do typically respond faster to the browser. So what is Gatsby.js? A lot of people refer to it, or you can refer to it as a static site generator, but it's really beyond that. Um, Gatsby.js has these built-in capabilities to make your project meet the uh, standards of a, or the guidelines set by progressive web app. Um, it uses React. It also uses GraphQL to pull down data. Um, and there's a large ecosystem of plugins. And these plugins basically help you add additional functionality to your site. And it's fast. Uh, it does a lot of code splitting for you and a lot of other things that help make your site just perform really quickly. OK, so quick overview, what is React? React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. What is GraphQL? GraphQL is a query language that allows you to pull data into your website, and that's, that's what we're using for, uh, for Gatsby.js. OK, what is a progressive web app? So again, you can think of Gatsby.js as a as a progressive web app generator, because the site that you generate will already has the tools already has the tools uh, built in to meet these standards. So it's responsive, it's app like, um, it's installable, and by installable we mean like if you visit a site that qualifies as a progressive website on your phone, you might get a prompt to install that that site onto the home screen of your phone, so then you can visit it as if it were like an app on your phone. Um, OK, so here's a, a visualization of what Gatsby is doing. You can pull data down from multiple sources. Uh, once you have that data, you can start building your site with CSS and React. Um, and then you can deploy it, your static assets that you generated with Gatsby um, to any a hosting service of your choice. OK, uh, so here's an example of a popular business, Airbnb, that uses Gatsby for Airbnb.io. Um, Hopper.com also has used Gatsby uh, for their homepage. OK, so why did we decide to use Gatsby? Well, uh, so the original refactor.tech site was pretty hard for one person to manage. Um, it was a template that we found online, and 
it was pretty sloppy, it didn't perform very well, and whenever we had to make changes to it, it just, it was a very tedious process. Um, also, we, know, we knew that the site could not withstand being on, uh, a, if a user visited the site on like spotty internet access, then we know that they would have a poor experience because the site isn't really built to withstand that or to handle that. Um, and the site does not meet any standards um, within this, the guidelines that make a progressive web app. Okay, so here's how I got started. After installing Gatsby, I used the Gatsby CLI. And what you're seeing me do here is just create a project to get started with. Um, here is a, sort of an idea of what the project structure is like. We have a sort of take note of the source directory and under that the pages directory. We're going to focus on that area going forward. Okay, so now that I have this, uh, this new Gatsby project, where do the original files from the refactor.txt site that we haven't changed yet go? So one thing to note is that in order to create a page in my Gatsby site, I have to define a React component uh, within the pages directory. So in this GIF, what you're seeing is in a file called index.js, this file exists under the pages directory. And in that file, I am defining a React component, and that React component is my home page. Okay, so I basically followed this pattern in order to create the pages in my app. So what you're seeing me do here is I'm in the original refactor.tech repository, and I'm trying to create a speakers page. So I go to speakers.html, and I copy all of that HTML. And I used something called an HTML to JSX compiler. Um, and once I actually got to that compiler, I pasted my HTML and I got a bunch of JSX back. And so all I needed to do was throw this into the speaker component I define in speakers.js. So here's what that looks like. Step one, I'm in the pages directory. Step two, I create a file called speakers.js. And step three, I define a React component in that file, and I just throw in all of the JSX there. Um, and that's a bit, that code has been cleaned up a bit, but that was the general workflow. Okay, so that's what this gets us. We have sort of like the foundation of a page in our site. So how do we get the data? We are currently organizing all of our data for the conference in Airtable, and so that's where we're pulling data from. And we are, we're using GraphQL to pull down this data, but we're going to use a plugin called Gatsby Source Airtable that's going to make that process a little bit easier for us. So um, again, a plugin is something that can add additional functionality to your site. It can really, it can also be a thing that you use to make your workflow easier. So um, this Gatsby source plugin is what I use to configure GraphQL to speak to Airtable. Um, okay, so uh, in my Gatsby config.js file, I set up I set up how we're going to start to talk to Airtable. So all I'm doing here is saying, hey, let's use the Gatsby source Airtable plugin, and I want to pull data from the speakers table. Okay, so here is a graph IQL or graphical, and this is sort of like a playground that you can use in order to build your GraphQL queries. Um, and so what you're seeing here is that, like, on the left side, I know what query I want in order to pull the correct speaker data. And on the right side, what was there are like nodes of data that I'm getting back for each speaker. Okay, so now that I know my, my GraphQL query is correct, um, how do I actually get this onto the page? Well, again, what we're getting back here are nodes of speaker data. 
And here's our speaker.js file. This is uh, where we've defined that React component that holds the speaker's page. At the bottom of that, I just throw in the GraphQL query. And at this point, those, no those nodes of data are available for use in on that speaker's page. And so what I've done is I've passed that data as a prop into speaker card list. And here is what speaker card list does. It further drills down the data into another component, which is an individual speaker card. So I have this speaker card list. Within that list, I have individual speaker cards, and I'm passing the data into those individual speaker cards. Here's what that individual speaker card looks like. So you can see I'm passing in data, like the Twitter URL, or the uh, speaker's LinkedIn, and their headshot, and their name. All of that is being brought in from Airtable and then passed down into uh, the React components. And altogether, here's what that produces. We have a list of individual speaker cards. So there was more to do. Uh, we wanted to give users the ability to click on a card and then see, um, click on a card and see information specific to that speaker. And so unlike some other static site generators, Gatsby actually lets you create pages from data. Um, and so we're going to talk about how I did that. So in order to create a page, you really only need two things. Part one is you need to build a slug for the page. And a slug is just another word for like, at least in this scenario, a unique URL. So we need like a, a unique path for our page. Um, part two is getting the data we want to create the page with. So here's part one where we are building that unique path. And what you're seeing here is is on the on each node, remember those nodes of data that we saw earlier? We're gonna do we're gonna take a node and then we're gonna build a, a unique path based on the data in that node. And then we're gonna create a field or we're gonna create a field on that node. So what we're doing is expanding, we're adding a field key to that node, and you're gonna see an image of that in a second. So here's what that looks like. We, once we build our unique URL and add the field, that is there now. OK, here's part two where we're actually creating the page. And I had to sort of simplify some of this code. But what you're seeing here is that now that these nodes of data um, include the field with the unique path, I can tell Gatsby, create a page, create a page with this unique path, and also use a particular template that I've built for this new page. So that's what, that's what this code is doing here. And so what that allows us to do is um, we have this unique URL for an individual speaker, and we can create a page for that speaker with just that speaker's information, um, and like when that's the talk that that speaker will be giving. So cool, this is actually a huge accomplishment. <laughs> For the most part, like that's the workflow <laughs> that's needed uh, to, to build this site. Um, but we weren't really done yet. Uh, so, so far, this project is easier to manage. Um, but we don't really know if if we've got like a better experience for the user, if they have spotty internet access. We also don't know if this qualifies as a progressive web app yet. But there is a way we can figure that out. We can use this. We can do an audit. And there's a tool in the Chrome DevTools called Lighthouse. And Lighthouse will let you, will test your app against these things. It'll Test, it'll sort of give you a grade based on how your app does against these bullet points. OK, so um, here's the grade that we got back uh, by Lighthouse for the site, the refactor site that wasn't using Gatsby, and then just our first iteration of the new refactor site that uses Gatsby. So what's cool about this is that 
we haven't really used all the powers of Gatsby.js, but we're already doing so much better with performance and accessibility and best practices. Um, our SEO has gone down, but that can easily be fixed. So, um, okay, how do we make refactor.tech available and more resilient on a spot, on spotty inter, excuse me, spotty internet, on a spotty internet connection? We can use uh, the Gatsby plugin, uh, the Gatsby offline plugin. And so what this is really gonna get us to is like a better, we're gonna like improve our performance and improve our best practices. Also take steps to getting qualified as a progressive web app by implementing this Gatsby plugin offline. So what this does is it, it implements a service worker. So in your browser, there is something called a cache interface and that cache interface stores certain information about the site that that you are visiting. And so a service worker can, one of the many things that it does is it uses this cache interface in order to define what an offline experience might be like. So just by using the Gatsby plugin offline, we're able to take advantage of that, of that capability. Okay, so how do we boost our score and performance? Another way is to uh, optimize our images. So Gatsby image is a React component, but it does a lot of things. Uh, it uses some, it uses Gatsby plugin sharp and Gatsby transformer sharp. And what you're seeing here is the configuration I put in place in order to use Gatsby image. Um, sharp is a utility library and that utility library is used to optimize images. And what it'll do is basically give you versions of your, image, of your image that are web friendly. So with this setup in place, I'm able to take our headshot and uh, do, get optimized images or different versions of our images. So what you're seeing on the left is a traced SVG. In the middle is like a low resolution photo. And then on the far right is a high resolution photo. So this is an example of the versions of uh, images that we're getting back. And depending on the user's device's capability, we will use the appropriate image. So for example, if I, what I've done here is I've made myself online and I've gone to the site. And as you can see, like I can't get the the high resolution images of each speaker, but I do get the traced SVG image. So it's not like a terrible offline experience, like we still are getting something. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so how do we give refactor.tech uh, the attributes of a progressive web app? Well, we can use a plugin, um, another plugin called Gatsby Plugin Manifest. And so earlier in the talk, I shared some of the attributes of a progressive web app. And one of those attributes are to make your site installable. So if you visit it, you get a prompt to install it on the home screen of your phone. If we use this plugin, um, we are giving our site the, the capability to do that. And all a manifest is, is a JSON file. And it's a set of instructions that we are giving to the browser um, on like how do we, how, do, how will this app look? What will its name be? So here's an example of, of what that looks like. I, I'm at the Gatsby version of this site. There's this option to install refactor.tech. And after I click install, then this project is now available like as an app. So maybe you didn't see it there initially, but it's available under like Chrome apps. Um, so the manifest file made that possible. Okay, so now that we've taken advantage of some of the powers that Gatsby.js has, let's do another audit. And so what we get here is a pretty big improvement. Um, we have drastically improved our performance, accessibility is better, best practices are better, um, 
so is SEO. We did that in some ways that I didn't share with you in this talk. Um, and we are now qualified as a progressive web app. This is huge. Okay, so here are our results. The project is now easier to manage. Uh, we know that we are offering our users a better experience offline or if they have spotty internet access. This project now qualifies as a progressive web app and we have more than doubled our site's performance. And now we are <laughs> pretty much done. Okay, so uh, throughout this process, uh, besides getting help from a ton of people, there were some resources that I used. I used the docs and the tutorials. That are, they are very um, sort of easy to digest. Um, also, there's the Gatsby Discord community. Does anyone here use Discord at all? Yeah, okay, nice. So, um, my battery's dying. Uh, okay, so the Gatsby Discord community is great. People who actually work at the Gatsby organization are there and they answer questions. That's super helpful. And then there's a Gatsby uh, YouTube channel. Uh, they recently had like an annual event. Uh, so they have very recent videos about like what Gatsby image is and how to talk about Gatsby to your, to your team of developers or maybe to uh, your boss. So yeah, thank you so much for <laughs> joining me today. <laughs>